Hello everybody. Um welcome back uh to this game programming series. I took kind of a little hiatus cuz I'm in school right now and studies are a big priority. Um but I haven't forgotten. Um so I'm going to continue on with this this program I'm working on right now. Um today we're going to be talking about some uh well user inputs uh set up the main character and stuff like that. Um, I'm sorry if my audio is not very good. I'm, I am i don't know what's wrong with my, my microphone on my laptop, but it stopped working. Tried downloading some drivers and things. The only thing I can do is use uh, an, an external microphone, but I don't have one, so I'm using headphones. So I'm sorry if the audio is really quiet. I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can boost the volume on my software or whatever. Anyway, I'll jump right into the programming here. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, um, well, let's talk about how we're going to control this character. Um, the idea I have is to direct the direction the he's going to walk in with the right mouse button. Like, you, you'll have this kind of targeting method of moving the mouse around and then you just right click and it'll go in that direction. That's the idea. And then when we get that far we'll we'll have like he'll have like a little laser gun or something and left click will will fire the gun. So that's the idea I have right now. And if he'll stop if he runs into a wall or if um the user wants him to stop, like he'll probably we'll have the user press a button for the character to stop. Okay. So to get these inputs First of all, let's let's load some bitmaps. We'll need. Uh, I think we'll need one here. Load bitmap. Call it reticule. I've got like this little um, targeting thing that I made. Oops. Power of suggestion. All right. Let's see, what else do I have? That's all the bitmaps I need to load into here. Um, now, where is our... What kinds of input are we going to have? Well, we already have this character input. We'll also have when the mouse moves. Go to, I don't know. Let's call it target or something. Print. And then when we click, when the uh, left button goes down, go to left click. And when you, when the right button goes down, Go to right click. Okay. So now we're going to add a sprite for the targeting device. Let's do that right in here. After we draw the terrain. This would be a good place to do it. So you do add sprite. Um, the The name of the sprite and then the name of the bitmap you're going to use. Okay. And I think this is where I'll add the sprite for the... Well, somewhere in here I'm going to add the sprite for the main character, but, but not yet. We'll wait on that. This will probably be a two-parter. Um, okay. So the next thing we're going to do here. Um, let's go down to... Hmm. Alright, let's have a branch here called target. Now what happens when the mouse moves? Well, we want, we want this, uh, this sprite to follow the mouse, because we want it to represent where the mouse is located at. So, this is rather easy to do. Um, 
Now, first of all, issue this command. I'm, I don't, I guess I don't really know how to describe what it does other than just showing you. So, um, I'll, I'll show you what it's like with it and without it. Um, so now we'll just define, whoops, where, where we want to put this sprite. So with sprite x, y, which one, um, reticule, um, now. Where do we want to put it? Well, where the mouse is. So use these variables, mouse x and mouse y. However, I don't want to do that because that'll, I'll just show you. It won't look quite right. And mouse y. So then you want to draw sprites or nothing will happen. and wait, because otherwise it'll go down here and end the program. Um, all right, so let's let's try this out. Now see how this, this little red circle here, it's not exactly lined up with the mouse. It's up here in the, the corner. Um, if you want the, the center of the mouse to be, the tip of the mouse to be right in the center of the, the targeting device here, um, remember I have, kind of a unit set up to be equal to 32 pixels. So um, to be at the center here, take away um, half of the unit. So like this. All right. And ta-da, now it's all lined up right. OK, now. I told you I was going to show you what the scan thing does. So I'll comment this out and show you what happens now. If I move quickly here, you'll notice there's a lag. So, you know, I really don't know what specifically the word scan does to the program or how it runs. I just know that it has favorable results. So, yeah, I guess I'm not an absolute expert on all the details of just basic, but um, I just know that without the word scan, when you try to do something that updates a lot, it might lag. All right, what was the next thing we were going to do? All right, um, let's go down here and add the other two branch labels we had. One was called left click, L click. And this is where we're going to have do some stuff to fire laser gun or something like that. We'll do that later. So for now, just wait. Just have it wait. Now, what do you do when you right click? This is where we do some fancy stuff. I'm going to have a variable called, well, a few variables here. MCX is where the, characters, where the character is currently located at, and same with MCY. I'm going to have MCDX, which is how fast the character is moving in the X direction. MCDY is how fast it's traveling in the Y direction. Okay, so now how are we going to set this up? Where is it at? Here we go. All right. Um, let's see. This is kind of mathy. Um, I'm going to set it up as a unit vector and then just do a multiple of the unit vector. That way we can kind of, I don't know the correct lingo, but kind of give, give the uh, character the correct direction and then just just a multiple of that will be its speed um, but here's how this works um, and if you don't understand the math behind it that's okay it's basically it's gonna be the for for the X direction MC DX it's going to be the difference between um, the mouse's position and the main character's current position. 
um, divided by, and um, this this is where it gets kind of interesting, the square root of the difference between the x direction squared and the difference between the y direction squared. And that's kind of like the distance theorem you may have learned in Algebra 1, is it? Or Algebra 2? Um, yeah, so that just, that divides it by the magnitude, so you have a magnitude of 1 when you, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm not a math teacher. Anyway, I'll just do it. And the square root would just be to the 0.5 power. Um, for the memcy dy, we'll just copy and paste and change these y's here. And this all stays the same. All right. Now, this won't actually update anything until we go to this continuously looping loop <laughs> called timer ticked. Um, and I can't really advance just yet because I don't even think I've added the sprite for the main character. No, see, he's not here. So I'm going to call it quits for part one and pick it up in part two where I will um, add the main character and make a move. So stay tuned for that.